And um, one of the things that is uh, sort of particularly sort of shocking to me is is the kinds of areas where that's experienced. So. Um, you mentioned about the education system, and people keep saying this as well and to us. Healthcare as well. Healthcare is is absolutely um, uh, kind of uh, incredible to me that um, you know people are confronted with situations in which they have to choose between paying a bribe mm. and their family member not getting treated. Yes, exactly. And that is that is not a choice that I think any of us. Um, could accept um, or could say that we would definitely not behave in the same way that they have because they are putting family members' well-being first. So I completely understand why people are so frustrated. I mean, in healthcare terms, let's be clear, the country is spending an awful lot of money on healthcare. In terms of proportion of GDP, Mm -hmm. Bosnia and Herzegovina spends Swedish levels on healthcare. So the money is being spent, but it's not being spent in the right places. And this is where I'd love to to use this sort of COVID moment where um, people are thinking about the healthcare system a lot more, where it's the chance maybe to disrupt the way things have been done. Um, I'd love to see this mo- moment used to try to change some of that because, mm. because healthcare is just one of those fundamental issues where people are... I think it's a driver of people leaving. Mm. Um, they tell us that it's what they're looking for is healthcare. The phrase that's come up several times in our research has been healthcare with dignity. Mm. Um, and that dignity comes from not having to bribe or give gifts um, mm. in order to secure what you, have, you are entitled to and what you have paid for through mm. your taxes. On the education side of this, Again, recognize this in the feedback that I've, I've had from people that this is, this is um, far too common, that it's not the people who are necessarily studying and uh, um, uh, committing themselves, working hard, that are being rewarded in terms of the grades or in terms of the, the outcomes. Um, this for me is about sort of a, a, a broader sense of the interference of politics in um, daily life. Mm-hmm. Here. Mm-hmm. So that um, many people... Uh, in public administration or in state-owned companies, um, you need to be a party member or you need to have yes. party connections in order mm. to get a job. It's not on merit. Um, you know, for me, it's the fact that the director of a kindergarten can be appointed on the basis of their yes. party connections, <laughs> not because they are qualified to do that job. And I, I think that is that is just far too much party politics in daily life Mm. so that that angle i think is again consistently um uh flagged to me and and to us as the embassy so what what can we do about this um and this is where i think uh it it's not just the uk i mean it's worth saying you know the us the eu germany norway sweden there are a lot of partners active here trying to help in these issues um, uh, and I think something like corruption, you have to tackle it from, from both ends. You need to be sort of top down and bottom mm. up as well. So top down means things like um, uh, fixing the rules, uh, the laws, um, protecting whistleblowers. Mm-hmm. There's been a law on whistleblowers mm. that's been held up for years that would give much more protection to people who um, want to report corruption. Uh, it means um, uh, high level cases. I mean, this, mm. this is the ultimate indication to people in a country that corruption is being taken seriously is when you start to see someone senior in politician, a uh, politician or in other areas, someone senior who is arrested, goes to trial, is convicted and goes to prison. Mm. All of those stages. Mm. That's when you start to believe that mm. the rules apply to everyone, not only to, to some. And then the sort of bottom-up bit is also about um, encouraging people to to expect and demand more. Of course, yes. Um, and to mm-hmm. you know, report if they experience corruption in their daily lives. Um, to uh, make sure that when they when elections come round, that they make this an issue that um, politicians have to care about because mm. it is something that is going to win them votes. And so, we're coming up to elections soon in this country. I think that's an incredibly important moment. In terms of people's voice, it is it is the most important. Mm. How people vote, the fact that they vote. I think everyone should vote. If you're happy with the situation, you vote. Have, yeah. If you're not happy with the situation, yep, vote. vote. It, that has to be the starting point. And then making sure that you vote on the basis of what people represent. Not just mm. who they are, but what they will do mm. in office. Then you can start to have a conversation. 
one thing that makes me quite sad, I've, I've been here for sort of two election cycles, so local and general elections before. I didn't hear a lot about healthcare. Mm-hmm. I didn't hear a lot about education systems. Didn't really hear a lot about the rule of law. Those weren't the kinds of things that people were campaigning on. Mm. Given those are what citizens care about, I'd love to see more of that being discussed. 